This video's part two of a three-part series is all about healthy lifestyles for artists. If you missed part one, be sure to go back and watch it for tips about ergonomic equipment and posture. In this video, we'll be covering wrist and eye health. Wrist health? Boy oh boy, another artist lecturing you about wrist health. Don't you know it? Cause it's true. <laughs> you gotta hear it over and over and over to get it into your brain. Always watch your wrist. Always watch your wrist health, right? It is your money maker. If you're going into art as your career, your wrist, that's the thing that's gonna make you money. Make sure that you keep it in good health, right? You need to protect your wrist from strain and injury so that you can draw for longer. Do regular stretches. I did I didn't exercise at all <laughs> in high school, anything like that. I don't I didn't really exercise. I don't have a regimen, right? The thing I exercised was my wrist. I did so many wrist stretches. There's this guide, I can't remember. If it was an artist or if it was Nintendo itself that released it but there's like a Splatoon like stretching guide you know the game where it's like they tell you this one was called like the sad Italian <laughs> there are so many good stretches that were supposed to be for Splatoon players right who play for very long periods of time but they're also really really good for artists so make sure that you are doing a lot of those wrist exercises try to draw with your arm more loosen your grip on your drawing utensils so that you're not stressing out your nerves right that's why especially with traditional artists you guys if you're working with paint or working with charcoal you you want to make sure that you are using that entire arm, right? Don't just use your wrist because that's a smaller range of motion and you're going to be stressing out these nerves that are within your wrist a little bit more. If your wrist starts to hurt, stop drawing and let it heal. If your wrist starts to feel like it is hurting while you're drawing, don't push through it. No, no, no. <laughs> stop. Just stop. It's a lot better for you to just stop drawing, put a brace on it, or just like don't work with it at all and just let it heal for a couple of hours, maybe for the rest of the day, right? You don't want to stress out your arm too much. You don't want to stress out your hand too much. You don't want to stress out your wrist too much. It's going to lead to injury, right? So you want to make sure that you are resting that wrist so that nothing bad happens to it. Wrist braces also help with avoiding carpal tunnel as well. Do I have like all of the symptoms of a carpal tunnel memorized? Of course not. So I have a list here that I will read off for you so you don't get carpal tunnel. And so that like, you know, you know the signs. Weakness when gripping objects with one or both hands, pain or numbness in one or both hands, pins and needles feeling in the fingers, swollen feeling in the fingers, burning or tingling in the fingers, especially the thumb and the index and middle fingers, pain or numbness that is worse at night and interrupted sleep. Pretty bad. If you, I end up having carpal tunnel, right? The only two ways that you can help with that is like it requires surgery. Um, like you, you can only help with it with surgery and you won't be able to draw anymore. Pretty bad. I don't think that you want that. <laughs> so make sure that you are keeping a track of your wrist health. Getting a separate grip for your drawing utensils is also ideal if they don't have one, right? Apple pencils, normal pencils, pens, brushes, etc. A grip, super, super useful, super, super ergonomic. You want to make sure like that you are holding the pencil in a more natural way. If it's so tiny, you're gonna have to squeeze it more, right? So if you have a grip, a thicker grip, the Cintiq pen, like Wacom pens, they have a very, they have a built-in grip. It's nice and it's like thick and squishy. It's a really, really nice holding utensil. My Surface pen doesn't have a grip, so I do need to get one for it. I keep forgetting, but the Apple pencil as well. Also a lot of like iPad artists will use a grip too, so. Make sure that you're watching for that wrist health. Make sure you're watching for your hand, your eyes. It's kind of funny that like me, I'm like lecturing you on how you should like watch for your eyes and like I'm wearing glasses. So, you know, I, I guess I am just like an example. <laughs> Very similar situation to your wrist. You need the eyes to see, not only for your artwork, but you know, to see. I hope you want to keep your sight, so make sure that you are watching for your eye health as well. If you notice your eye health diminishing, write some things that could be happening to you. Blurred vision, dry eyes, headaches, or like heightened light sensitivity. Some of the things that can happen to you when your eye health starts to diminish. Number one thing that you probably shouldn't do that I learned um, back in high school is that if you are working on a PC, if you're working on a canvas, doesn't matter what, you shouldn't have a window as your backdrop. So if you have your two screens right here, right? Behind it should not be a window. You notice that my window is behind me, right? It should be that the light is going onto whatever you're working with, not that the light is coming at you. I know that like having a window as your backdrop is good for like 
you know, lighting because it's natural lighting, but it's bad for your eyes because you're just kind of staring into the sun all day. Not great, right? Pretty bad because you are straining now. The screens are competing with the light behind it. It's the same thing with a canvas. You're, it's also just not good for your canvas, right? You're not getting any light on your canvas. You're getting like backlit, <laughs> which is like not great anyway. So you kind of want that light directly on it or to the side. Very, very similar to getting up and walking, taking a rest, right? Every 20 to 30 minutes, get up, look somewhere far away so that you are, you know, resetting your eyes and like giving them like an exercise so that they're not just looking in one place all the time. So you want to make sure that you are looking somewhere farther away to test your depth perception, to test if your eyes can focus far away again. If you can't really focus that far away, congratulations, you need glasses. But if you are able to focus far away, you're still a-okay. So make sure that you are, you know, getting up, walking and looking far away as well so that you're not just looking at the same distance every single day all the time. Also artists, I know what you do. I know that you hunch over, you lean over and you decide to look at your work and you're like so tiny and close because you want to get all those details in there. Step back, my friend. Nobody's going to look in that far. If you are working on your pieces and you are like sitting so close to your work, you're not seeing the big picture. You're also just hurting what your work looks like because <laughs> you're so hyper focused on one section. You should back up with desks it's more ergonomic to have your monitors a full arm's length away from you it should be the same thing with your canvas or your sketchbook or whatever it is that you're working on right you should have it so far it's a little bit farther away so that you're not straining your eyes too too much you know what i mean join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists get creative assignments individual guidance and real-time feedback on your artwork start today and level up your practice if you learn something new like and share this with a fellow art nerd if you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.